Hey guys, welcome to every movie I watched in March, ranked. Drive Away Dolls. In search of a fresh start, two women embark on an impromptu road trip to Tallahassee, Florida. However, things quickly go awry when they cross paths with a group of inept criminals along the way. Really disappointed with this movie. I was excited. The trailer got me. I was so excited because of the trailer. And once I left the theater finishing the movie, I was like, why did I watch this? That's already telling you where this is going to end up. It's not funny. It's boring. It drags. You really feel the length of the movie. A lot of dicks. And it's just like, it's been done. And it's not even funny. Happy to see Pedro Pascal, daddy. But yeah, no. Why did I watch this? Dune part two. Paul Atreides unites with Chani and the Fremen while seeking revenge against the conspirators who destroyed his family. This is cinema. I think it's been stated everywhere. I don't, I've yet to see one bad review. I'm sure there are out there. And whoever's doing that is, they just want to be different because this movie is so freaking good. The acting in this, it's not just a cinematic masterpiece when it comes to how beautiful it looks and you could just tell how much work went into this film but the acting just matches it. The entire cast came to play in a good way. I just see it getting so many Oscar nominations, deservedly so. Play it again. Now these next four I'm grouping together. Kung Fu Panda. To everyone's surprise, including his own, Poe, an overweight, clumsy panda, is chosen as protector of the Valley of Peace. His suitability will soon be tested as the Valley's arch enemy is on his way. Kung Fu Panda 2. Poe and his friends fight to stop a peacock villain from conquering China with a deadly new weapon. But first, the dragon warrior must come to terms with his past. Kung Fu Panda 3. Continuing his legendary adventures of awesomeness, Poe must face two hugely epic but different threats, one supernatural and the other a little closer to home. Kung Fu Panda 4. After Poe is tapped to become the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace, he needs to find and train a new dragon warrior, while a wicked sorceress plans to resummon all the master villains whom Poe has vanquished to the spirit realm. I watched 1 through 3 before watching Kung Fu Panda 4 in theaters when it came out because I wanted to refresh my mind. I wanted to remember exactly what happened so that I would understand part 4 because it had been a while since I watched all three of them. And it's just such a good time. Kung Fu Panda is so funny. All four of them. The fourth one just adds to the story, adds to Poe's story. New characters, really good characters. To this day, I do believe the second one is the best out of the four. That's just my opinion. It's one of the most evil villains, I would even say. But that's not taken away from all four. And I'm pretty sure it's going to continue. I believe there's going to be a fifth installment. And because of that, I know I'm going to be watching one through four to recap before watching the new one when it comes out. All four, I'll watch it again someday. Ricky Stanicki. When three childhood best friends pull a prank that goes wrong, they invent the imaginary Ricky Stanicki to get them out of trouble. 20 years later, they still use the non-existent Ricky as a handy alibi for their immature behavior. Honestly, the only good thing in this movie is John Cena, and I was really surprised by that. I haven't really seen movies where John Cena acts. I think the one that I can think of is Barbie, and he's just a cameo in it. He's not really a big major role. But in this one, I was like, let's see. Let's see if he's a good actor. And I was pleasantly surprised. This movie is bad. It's not funny. Another film where there's a lot of dick jokes and like the same thing over and over. And I'm not opposed to like dick jokes. It's just like, it's not even funny. It's very weirdly edited, badly edited actually. I was just waiting for this movie to end. Why did I watch this? Late Night with the Devil. In 1977, a live television broadcast goes horribly wrong, unleashing evil into the nation's living rooms. Oof, this has gotta be one of the best horror movies of the year, even though it's just Marge. So, 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 so happy that this indie film is getting so much recognition, so much hype, because it deserves it, it has earned it. It is so 
good. I think it's so cool that it's a found footage film, but it's in a different way. This is a found footage of this is the last recording of this late night talk show. He touches on the price of fame and what you do, what you're willing to sacrifice and who you're willing to sacrifice in order to achieve a status of fame, popularity, wealth. And when you regret it, it is too late. It is, it's just so good. It really is so good. Play it again, immaculate. Cecilia, a woman of devout faith, is warmly welcomed to the picture-perfect Italian countryside where she is offered a new role at an illustrious convent. But it becomes clear to Cecilia that her new home harbors dark and horrifying secrets. Now this one, I had fun. I thought it was really good. Sydney Sweeney, the film is her. her. She is the movie and she does such a good job. That ending scene, woo, she goes in. There's a twist to it that I was not expecting, but I enjoyed it that it was like, it makes you think it's a horror movie like other ones. I don't want to spoil that much. That's why I'm trying to be as vague as possible. Maybe even more scary because this could actually happen to people today as opposed to like the supernatural demonic stuff, you know. Sure, there's nothing else to do. Problemista. Alejandro is an aspiring toy designer from El Salvador, struggling to bring his unusual ideas to life in New York. As time runs out on his work visa, a job assisting an erratic art world outcast becomes his only hope to stay in the country. This was such a lovely film, such a beautiful representation of hope, not losing hope, going after what you want. And even though you're having a really, really hard time never giving up, when you think you're about to, other doors open, multiple ones, and you still choose to go towards your dream, even though it might take you some time, but you're still going for it. Such good acting. I mean, Tilda Swinton, she's a queen. She can do anything. And I was like really, really happy to see some Salvadorian representation. If you didn't know, I am half Salvadorian. So I really, really thought about my dad when I was watching this film and how he came over to the States to chase his dreams for a better life. Sure, there's nothing else to do. Irish wish. When the love of Maddie's life gets engaged to her best friend, she puts her feelings aside to be a bridesmaid at their wedding in Ireland. Really excited to see Lindsay. Happy to see her, you know, back and working and acting because she's such a good actress. But this movie is bad. I don't know what I was doing, girl. Like, I don't know what I was expecting. I really wanted this to be good at least funny. I knew what I was signing up for when I hit play. I was like, okay, it's a romantic comedy, but it's just another lifetime. It's not even lifetime, but it's, I would say it's like another lifetime rom-com. You, you know exactly what's going to happen. You fall in love with this man, but you find another one that that's supposed to be your true love. The same old recipe, the same pattern, same puzzle pieces. It's just not good. It says, it's, it's, like, if you're into romantic comedies, I feel like you'll like this, but it's, it's whatever. It lit, and like, mm -mm, no. Why did I watch this? The Omen. Mysterious deaths surround an American ambassador. Could the child that he is raising actually be the Antichrist? The devil's own son? I've heard of this movie, but I had never seen The Omen, the original Omen. And I was really, really pleasantly surprised. Obviously, it's not meant to be like these jump scares or slasher or anything like that. It's, and it's very real because it touches on the politics and how the government, they want power. They are the devil. They are the antichrist. They are the ones who are putting evil out in the world, like causing it, creating it, pushing it all of the above and how the church wants that as well they have that kind of power they want to keep that power and they want to keep creating even more fear to maintain it fine but i'm on my phone dog man as a child douglas was abused by a violent father who then threw him to the dogs instead of attacking him the dogs protected him Traumatized and leading a life on the margins of society with his dogs, Douglas descends into a murderous madness. Dog lovers, this is your movie because it's such a good depiction on loyalty and how dogs literally, if you show them love, because that's all they want, they are going to be loyal to the end. But I gotta say, that's like the only thing that I really liked. I mean, I did like that 
this man does drag and i i really enjoyed that a drag queen who kills but i thought it was going to be more action-packed like the main actor is really really good the trailer definitely definitely misled me it felt incomplete it felt like a rough draft Ooh. Fine, but I'm on my phone. Godzilla Kong the New Empire. Godzilla and the Almighty Kong face a colossal threat hidden deep within the planet, challenging their very existence and the survival of the human race. This is a fun movie. I want monsters. That's the only thing that I would have to critique about it is that it's, they are really trying to push the human stories. And I understand, you know, there's gotta be humans. That's why I still loved Godzilla Minus One. I hate to compare, but Godzilla Minus One, that's why it was so good. Because it just showed the effect of the monsters on humans. And in this one, it's like, they're pushing it. Like, these humans are the reason why these monsters are doing what they're... Like, no. I don't... I want to see monsters. I don't want to see human stories. Like, granted, the acting is really, really good. The actors hats off to you y'all are really good but i don't need it that's not the reason i'm going to see this movie <laughs> i'm trying to see godzilla and kong speaking of it felt like godzilla took a backseat to kong godzilla really was like where are you girl hello i'm i'm waiting for you and whenever you come out i'm excited but i need more of you it's godzilla and kong not kong featuring godzilla the epic epic battle at the end really enjoyed it bonkers but that's what i want to see I want to see wild, bonkers, incredible fighting. I'll watch it again someday. That's going to be my ranking of every movie that I watched in the month of March. What do you think, guys? Have you seen any of these? How would you rank them? Or did you see other ones that I didn't? Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting. And until next time, adios.